Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up folks for this week, Friday, April 5th, 2024. A busy week this week with uh, the beginning of the week and the beginning of the month. We had some great interviews, as you probably saw, with the one and only SGNON. We covered a lot of topics, geopolitical and financial. You can go back and reference that video on our different uh, platforms. We had the great Anne LaFleur talking about bonds for the wind, win and trusts and other related things to trust uh, to help you kind of go forward, folks, post RV to decide how you want to proceed with that. And of course, Denise Boland, who's always a pleasure. We had a pretty long video on her channel that is going to be uh, interviewed. The interview is going to be featured on our channel probably sometime today. Uh, we're going to break it up into a couple of parts, so it's a little bit more digestible. Next week, folks, this coming Monday onward, if we have a powerhouse of interviews is probably, and I don't overstate this at all in saying this is probably one of our most important and uh, uh, compelling uh, set of interviews that we've had to date. We have a secret whistleblower. It's not the same person that was killed, for those who would say that, uh, from a major airline manufacturer. This person is going to be coming on, putting their job and more importantly, their life at risk because they feel compelled to tell the truth. Uh, we'll have that show on Monday. It should be airing, of course, either same or next day. Uh, Derek Johnson on Tuesday. And then uh, Andy Schechtman, who is the founder of Miles Franklin, who is a colleague of, you know, Bill Holter. He's going to be coming on. You might want to take notes for this. He's going to be making some very important points about the reset and what it's tied to and why it's valid for those who are still doubtful or those of you who are trying to convince friends and family of the legitimacy he's going to squelch that in this very important interview. Uh, Brent Johnson, and then uh, we're excited to have this woman on. Uh, we're trying to get her for quite some time. The great Ann Vandersteel is going to be coming on Thursday, talking all things reset and geopolitical, what she's seeing in the landscape of her purview of experience. She has very good ties to President Trump and the family. And then, of course, good friend Dr. Scott Young will be back uh, next week. So it's, it's going to be powerful. I, I recommend personally just taking some notes I think we're all going to learn some great pieces of information uh, in the course of this week. Okay, a lot to cover in the headlines, so just let's dive right in. Uh, all 371 locations of the 99 cent stores are going to be going out of business. We also have Popeyes, Burger King, and Under Armour to file Chapter 11. So the, the attrition and pouring out of companies continues. A rare 4.8 earthquake you all know about that... Uh, happened in New Jersey and made its way through New York and Connecticut, hit today a 4.8. I still have some friends in that area and growing up in New England and those smaller states, it's not hard to believe that that could ripple out throughout the tri-state area in New England because the states are so small and compressed. But I checked with Denise and some other friends in that area. Unfortunately, they are fine. Uh, Iran is set to attack Israel uh, before the weekend is up. Let's be watching closely with that to see how Israel response to that as a follow-up retaliation, do they go after the secret nuclear power plants or do they wait to see what Iraq does? Remember, we have Sudani going to DC, I believe on the 14th. I'm not sure how long he's going to stay. What's interesting to note is that he does not have the HCL signed. Erdogan's coming to Iraq on the 22nd, allegedly to do that, among other things. And the following week, Sudani meets with the World Economic Forum, which of course are not our friends, but he may be, we're hoping, make the proclamation that um, Iraq is ready to return to the international stage at that particular platform with the UN in tow. That's what it appears to be. We'll have to see how that all plays out. Gold is at an all-time high, as you know, 2342.20 as of this broadcast. Oil hit yesterday over $90 a barrel. And uh, we're watching again for the Israeli grave mistake, because once that happens, that secret nu nuclear power plant attack that should spike, according to J.P. Morgan's article that we placed on Telegram several weeks ago, $380 a barrel. That will be the trigger point, and then the dinar. Because all eyes will be off of Iraq, they'll be on Israel, so the left won't see what the right is doing. So it's a sleight of hand. Silver is up at an all-time high today, $27.59, approaching that $30 mark we've been talking about. See, they can't suppress it anymore because everything is just moving away from paper and with Basel three and with the push off the de-dollarization, it's weakening the banks resting on the control of the commodities market. Zimbabwe, as you can see, is finally launching new gold-backed dollars uh, set to take effect in 21 days. So they are starting that move we've talked about. 
Remember, we need to be watching the elections in August with Nelson Chamisa, who is the people's choice, just like President Trump here. Remember, the countries copy each other, as we say many times over and over. We need to be watching that very, very closely, because uh, once Chamisa gets in, he's going to return the sovereignty to the people, remove the corruption, and back all monies, all monies in gold. He's already starting, or they're already starting, I should say, with the uh, dollars. I believe the bonds will be shortly thereafter. Ripple is to launch a USD stable coin. This, folks, is about liquidity, pure and simple. Right now, it's tied to the dollar, but at some point, we believe uh, all of the specific cryptos, XRP, XLM, XDC, which you know is uh, you know stellar, should be on the blockchain ISO 20022 under actual assets. They are not there now, but we believe they will be because you can't have all these currencies going asset backed and have the cryptos out of the party. We just don't see that happening. And it's the dollar's a dead system, so we don't see that uh, lasting a very long time. Okay, now to some questions that we usually cover. Can we only exchange once at the banks? Absolutely not. You're going to be able, we've said it before, we'll say it again for those who haven't heard it. Um, you can go to the banks as many times as you want during the 90-day period of historical replication when Kuwait went, it was 90 days. So you will be able to go as many times as you need to. The banks are going to make a 1% basis point, which equates to about 100000 per transaction uh, in lieu of taxes, key in lieu of taxes. So you can go as many times as you need to. You're not required to bring it all at once. So whoever's putting that out there, that's just not true. Secondly, uh, the question we got, I'm not sure if I have this 100% right. It was a little roughly translated, so give me some rope. But question is, why does the U.S. have to wait on Iraq before we are on the QFS? Um, they don't. It's, that's a non sequitur. Uh, the U.S. is part of the problem. They're the ones holding back Iraq along with the corrupt Iranian proxy government, just like the corrupt installed administration that we have here in the States. So the U.S. is not waiting. They're holding Iraq back. That is why we need Israel to step in because the U.S. won't and the Iranians certainly won't. Israel is going to have to be that X factor that comes in with the secret nuclear power plant attack, which frees up Iran from both the U.S. and from Iran itself. So the QFS is a separate issue that has nothing to do with this. So they're, they're mutually exclusive. So I just want to clarify that. Um, the U.S. doesn't have to wait on Iraq. Iraq's trying to get away from the U.S. It's just the opposite. So I hope that clarifies that issue once and for all. Also, just a side note, it's not a question, but it's something we're letting you folks know. We are working right now. We're in talks with the team from Mike Maloney, a very nice man, a very educated man about the precious metals market. And now that we're getting shows with Andy and Bill Holter and Greg Manorino, we're prayerful that that will pave the way for additional great guests such as Mike to come on board. We're also talking to the team from Lynette Zhang and also by request to Jim Willie, <laughs> which we do like him. He affectionately goes by the term, his words, not mine, golden jackass. Uh, but he is very, very knowledgeable about the reset and all the mechanisms tied to it. I've learned quite a bit from Jim, as is our team over the years. So we are working to see if we can facilitate that. So we will keep you posted as always. So there it is, Fast and Furious, all the updates. Anything major comes out prior to Monday with respect to Iran attacking Israel and any counter moves they should make will come on and do a uh, emergency broadcast. Otherwise, we will see you on the shows next week and the wrap up next Friday. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. God bless.